Thank you very much for joining today's webinar. Um, today we will talk about the power of personalization, how you can unlock the secret to higher conversions. I am uh, your host, Matthew Zilahi, and I'm a content partnerships manager of GetResponse. And I'm joined today by Eric from uh, Optimunk. Uh, he is a self-proclaimed partnerships and personalization geek. And today I will talk about uh, how you can personalize your email communications, and Eric will share your share his uh, insight on how you can personalize your on-site communications. The whole event is going to be approximately one hour long, and at the end uh, we will have a dedicated Q&A session where you can um, where we will try our best to answer your questions. So feel free to ask away in the chat and. Um, at the end of the event, we will turn in the Q&A mode and answer your questions. We will record the whole webinar and send you the recording uh, once the event has concluded. So before starting, I would like to um, tell you about the story. So uh, as you heard, I'm from Hungary, and which was uh, under communist rule up until the 1990s. And my parents uh, used to tell me this really funny commercial that they have seen on TV in the 70s, uh, where uh, it, it was a shoe commercial, and um, it was just a talking head looking straight into the camera, announcing, buy shoes from the shoe store. Now, this commercial is obviously funny looking back, but it was a product of its time. There weren't many options for um, purchasing goods, so the advertisement had basically no competition. People were simply happy to be able to purchase shoes, uh, and uh, that was it. There wasn't too many options there. But um, fast forward to today, and the world has completely transformed. The rise of the internet and e-commerce has created a world where consumers have countless options for purchasing things online. With so many options available, it's no longer enough to simply state what you are selling. You have to connect with your customers on an emotional level. Personalization has become a critical component of successful e-commerce. In order to remain competitive in this new landscape, you need to uh, focus on delivering tailored experiences and exceptional customer service. By embracing personalization, you can create meaningful connections, um, and build long-lasting relationships with your customers. But what is personalization exactly? Well, personalization uh, at its core is the art of delivering the right message to the right person at the right moment. Now, um, think about the last time you have uh, received a newsletter or seen an ad online. Uh, did it feel like it um, was tailored to you specifically? Did it resonate with you? Did you feel that it was tailored to your preferences and needs and wants? Or did it feel like a generic message that could have been sent to anyone? Personalization is all about making sure that your message is relevant and timely. It's about understanding your customers' needs and preferences and tailoring your communications to meet them. But why should you care about all this? Well, according to recent studies, 80% of consumers are more likely to make a purchase when brands offer personalized experiences. And 90% of consumers find personalization appealing. So if you follow the uh, uh, advanced personalization strategies outlined in this webinar, you will see an increase in your sales, leads, you can expect higher average order values, and a boost uh, on your uh, return on investment of all of your marketing activities. So let's talk about how you can personalize your email communications. I mentioned that uh, the three pillars are uh, sending your message at the right time to the right person and uh, obviously the right message. So let's start with uh, identifying the right person. Your first thing you need to do is gather information on your subscribers. You can um, imagine this as a, a timeline of events. When someone subscribes to your email list, uh, you usually have very limited information on them. You probably know their email address, their name, and most of the time that's it. But as time goes by, 
you will learn more about their preferences, their individual needs and wants. You will learn more about the purchase history and you will start um, building this uh, customer persona. So uh, generally speaking, the more data you have on your subscribers, the higher level of personalization you can achieve. Now to better illustrate my point, um, let's assume that I have an e-commerce store called Perfect Picks, and uh, I am selling uh, pet supplies, pet food, and I'm also using GetResponse marketing integration. So I get this from marketing automation. Now, uh, the next couple of slides are going to be uh, about e-commerce, but please note that most of these techniques can be used by uh, any online business. So I just started this e-commerce store of mine, and I want to build my uh, email database. So I uh, wrote an ebook called Doggy Language, uh, which promises to uh, teach uh, the owners how they can better communicate with their furry friends. I put together um, a landing page with the guest response website builder, uh, and I put the ebook there. When, and I start advertising this landing page. When someone downloads this ebook, I will get their email address, their name, the date of their subscription. I will have their consent status, whether they consented to receiving marketing communications from me or not. I will know their location. Uh, usually the country and the city, and I will know that they uh, downloaded this ebook. And because they downloaded this ebook, I can reasonably assume that they have a dog. But this is not uh, enough information for me, so I go one step further. After uh, they have downloaded this ebook, a couple of days go by, and I send them an email thanking them for, for uh, downloading this ebook and asking them to fill out a short survey for me. You can use one of the many available GetResponse integrations for survey creation. One of my personal favorites is Surveycate, which allows you to create um, online surveys effortlessly, and then you can send it to your um, user base or uh, subscribers with GetResponse. And the really cool thing is that all of the uh, survey answers will be instantly pushed to your GetResponse account. So the subscriber information will be propagated with their answers. In this example, I'm asking them what kind of pet they have, the pet's breed, the pet's age, uh, its name, and its birthday. So let's say that um, this particular subscriber of mine has a golden retriever who is seven years old. Uh, his name is Mr. Peanut and uh, his birthday is on uh, 27th of September. Now I have this information. I know that they have an aging water retriever, so I can start sending them like an educational email series on how they can take better care of their aging water retriever. And uh, as I'm sending out this educational email series, I can observe their behavior. I can uh, see which emails they opened, what links they click on. Uh, if I have GetResponse uh, tracking installed, I will also know which pages they visit on my website, which is really cool. And I will also learn about their overall engagement rate. Now, engagement rate scoring is a really neat feature of GetResponse. It basically scores your subscribers' engagement level on a one to five scale five being your, your most engaged subscribers who uh, interact with your brand the most frequently, who open your email messages, who click on your links, and one being the least engaged subscribers. And now, a couple of weeks go by, and they finally make their first purchase. They just bought some dog food for Mr. Peanut. Now I have even more information. I know what they bought when they bought it. I know how much money they have spent. I have their delivery address. If I ask for it in a checkout, I also have their phone number. And I will also know whether they are a B2B or a B2C client. And if they are B2B, I will have their company information. So by the time this hypothetical uh, customer of mine makes their first purchase, I have all this information on them. As you can see, it's a lot of data points that I can use to uh, personalize my messaging and to uh, 
create segments within my uh, um, email database uh, from these subscribers. This is how it looks like in GetResponse. So as you can see, you see all of their previous activities, uh, their name, email address, their engagement rate, and all of their uh, custom field values here. And now that I have this information, I can uh, create these uh, different segments for different kinds of communication. So if I want to um, invite uh, them for a dog show in the Bay Area, I will send it to people who are dog owners and who live in the general area. If I uh, have uh, an email about wholesale discounts, I'm going to send it to my B2B clients. If uh, I want to offer some kind of discount on cat toys, I'm going to send it to those uh, who are cat owners and who have visited the pet toy section on my website in the past couple of days. So uh, this is just um, a really basic uh, idea of how you can use segmentation to better tailor your communications to your subscribers. Now that we know uh, how to find the right person, the question is how to write the right message. Now, the most obvious form of uh, email personalization is the use of merge tags. I'm sure that most of you are familiar. This is what you would use uh, when you want to personalize a subject line or the greeting. Uh, and that's all and well and good. But uh, most people only use it to, or most businesses only use it to personalize the uh, greeting with the recipient's name, and that's it. But since we have all of these other data, it would be a waste not to use it in our email. So let's say that my perfect Pix e-commerce store is running a flash sale next weekend. I could send the first email, uh, which uh, just tells them about this um, flash sale and ask them to buy something. And yeah, probably there's going to be a couple of sales from this email. But the second email is going to convert way more subscribers. Because I'm not only personalizing their uh, name, I know how many days since uh, have passed since their last purchase. So uh, I have also added it here in the email. I know their pet's name, so I added the name Mr. Peanut here. And their pet's name is probably going to elicit an even more emotional response than their own name. I know what they bought last time, so I can also include it in the email. I can remind them that I'm also selling all their retriever toys and that I am offering same-day shipping in their general location. So basically, the uh, two emails are the same in at, the, at their core, but the second email feels much more personal and going to result in much more sales than the first one. Now, if you like merge tags, you will love dynamic content. Dynamic content is basically merge tags on uh, steroids. So uh, with merge tags, you can um, use these uh, variables for um, certain words within your email's content. But with dynamic content, you can personalize whole um, sentences or uh, paragraphs within your email. Uh, this requires a little bit of coding um, and um, the nitty gritty of it is kind of outside the scope of this presentation. But uh, you can read about dynamic syntax uh, in the GetResponse uh, website. And um, yeah, basically it's, for example, this code is a really simple um, HTML code that checks whether their um, pet, the, the custom field pet has been defined. And if it has been, whether if it's a dog or a cat. If their uh, custom field pet uh, value is a dog, the message of the email will read, buy a bone for your dog. If the uh, custom field value is cat, then the message will read, buy a mouse toy for your cat. And if this field is undefined, then this uh, code will assume that the recipient doesn't have a pet, and the message will be, you don't have a pet yet, buy one. So 
And this is a really simple application, but as you can see, uh, with this IFAS logic, you can uh, personalize uh, whole uh, sections within your email or even the whole email content without having to uh, writing more variants of the same email. You can also personalize coupon codes. So um, again, instead of just using one master coupon code that is the same for all of your subscribers, you can create unique uh, coupon codes for everyone on your list. These coupon codes can have different expiry dates, uh, different um, uh, discount percentages, and you can even customize the uh, actual uh, voucher code itself. So in this case, I included uh, their patch name as the coupon code. Smart product recommendations is another great feature of GetResponse. This is a pretty new addition to our arsenal. Basically, this is a smart widget that you can add to your emails. And um, based on the recipient's uh, past purchase history, it will automatically uh, suggest um, or recommend uh, products to buy. You don't have to set up anything. You just add the widget, and our AI solution will do the rest. You can also choose to get creative. Uh, there are some third-party tools that allow you to personalize uh, images within your email. Uh, so, uh, for example, there is this uh, service called HiPrize, which allows you to uh, add your uh, subscriber's name uh, to the emails, making it even more personal. Um, uh, sorry, uh, subscriber's name to the images within your email. Uh, if you have uh, multiple physical locations, uh, you can show your nearest uh, physical location on Google Maps based on their um, uh, residence. Uh, if you have a software service business, you can send them personalized charts or usage data. So you can feel free to uh, think outside of the box and come up with some creative ways to personalize your emails. And also the last and maybe the most important technique is um, adding a human touch to your emails. Um, because you have to understand that all purchase decisions come to down to emotion. Uh, and even the B2B uh, even if you have B2B clients, you are not uh, selling to companies. You are selling to other people. So step back and put yourself in your uh, customer's shoes and think about what your customers need and not what your brand needs. A great example of this is uh, this uh, screenshot I took. Uh, this brand decided to send a pre-Mother's Day email campaign to all of their subscribers, letting them know that uh, since uh, Mother's Day is a really sensitive subject to a lot of people, uh, they can opt out from their Mother's Day communications with just a click on a link. And this is a really simple way of showing that you really care about your subscribers and you care about their feelings. Uh, and um, this uh, particular email was tweeted out by one of their clients. And as you can see, it got a lot, lot of traction, more than a thousand likes. So even from a PR standpoint, it pays out in the long run to remain empathetic towards your uh, customers. Uh, some other best practices here would be adding your name to the front field uh, of the email and to the footer to let your subscribers know that they are not dealing with this uh, amorphous corporate entity, but with actual humans on the other end. Um, you should also try to avoid sending your emails from a no reply email address, uh, letting your uh, subscribers uh, respond back if they want to. Now we have talked about the right message and the right person. Now it's time to talk about timing, how you can send your emails at the right moment to make them convert. 
uh, if you are sending out an email blast or a newsletter campaign, you can obviously uh, schedule it for a specific time or send it out immediately. But with get response, uh, we have two other really cool features. One of them is called perfect timing, which uh, basically sends your messages out at the optimal hour of the day for each individual subscriber. So uh, based on that uh, past behavior, when they opened your past uh, email communications, is going to send uh, your email to them at this time when it's most likely to be opened by them. Uh, and the other um, uh, timing feature is called time travel, which delivers your email at a specific local time, regardless whether your subscriber is located geographically. So uh, if you want to send out an email at 9 a.m. in the morning, with time travel, it will be delivered at 9 a.m. in uh, Germany and 9 a.m. in Singapore. And to, um, um, to, even, to time your e emails even uh, better, you can also use automations which are triggered automatically without uh, human intervention. Uh, there are a lot of uh, different automations that can be set up with GetResponse. Uh, I could talk about just automations for uh, hours, but um, uh, the, here are a couple of um, examples how you can use automations to uh, send uh, emails to your uh, clients. So, uh, for example, you can set up an automation that is triggered when the subscriber's engagement level reaches a certain threshold. So, if a subscriber becomes a highly engaged one, then you can set up an automation to send them an automated email, thanking them for their loyalty and asking them for a review of your company. If it uh, drops significantly, then you can uh, send them a win back email. Uh, these automations can be also triggered by um, uh, the subscribers themselves. So, for example, uh, if they visit a specific page on your website, that can be a trigger for an automation. If they download an ebook, that can be a trigger of an automation to sending them that ebook or thanking them for downloading the ebook. Uh, you can set up uh, time based automations. So, uh, for example, if a certain time has passed since their last purchase, you can send them a follow-up email. Uh, you can send them uh, birthday congratulations on your, their birthday. Then you can also use it to uh, recover abandoned cards and uh, send uh, uh, post-purchase follow-up emails. So, as you can see, automations can be used a variety of different ways. And uh, it can be a bit overwhelming at first. So if you uh, haven't used automations before, I suggest you to uh, register for GetResponse. And you can find a lot of uh, automation templates um, that were pre-built by the GetResponse team, uh, which will help you get started. So uh, that was all about uh, personalization in email communications. And now it's time for Eric to talk about how you can personalize your on-site communications. Take it away, Eric. Yeah, Mate, thank you so much. <clears throat> you know, when you mentioned the doggy language um, ebook, I thought it was just an example, right? I didn't think it was an actual product. And then I got a little bit curious. And so I Googled, you know, doggy language. Mate, did you know there's an actual book on Amazon that has almost 2,600 reviews for doggy, how to speak doggy language. <laughs> I, I, I did not know that, but I'm not surprised. <laughs> yeah, no, this, that's incredible. I mean, wow, wow. I thought it was just an example, but no, that is a very popular item. So, you know, shame on me for thinking it was just a, a spoof item. But anyway, uh, so I'm ready to get into how to personalize the on-site experience. But before I do that, I want to tell you real quick, my son, his name is James, he's five years old, and he loves climbing trees. There's this park nearby and there's this ivory tree. It's one of those trees that has those long vines. And so he gets on a vine and he swings across like he's Tarzan. And he loves it. He almost do this every day when the weather is nice. Now, the other day I had to go to Home Depot 
and I had to pick up a part for a sink and I, I needed him to come with me. So I thought, hmm, how can I make this an enjoyable experience for him? So I thought about it and then I thought, okay, I have an idea. And I said, James, you know how you like climbing trees? And he's like, yeah. And I said, well, you know, trees are made from wood and daddy's got to go to this place where there's all kinds of wood, different shapes, different sizes. You can touch them. You can feel them. They even smell different. Do you want to go with me? <laughs> he was like, yeah, of course I want to go. Of course I want to go. And I said, come on in. And, uh, you know, we got in the car, we're driving over there and I'm looking in the rearview mirror and he's got this, you know, he, he could tell his face was filled with the anticipation because he was so excited to see this place that had all these different pieces of wood. And we go inside and it's the biggest place he's ever been in. And he sees like this mini forklift and he's in awe. And finally we walked the area where there's all the different pieces of wood and he looks up and he's like, daddy, can I go touch some of the wood? I'm like, yeah, go. And he runs over there and he's touching these different pieces of wood. And then I got him on my shoulders so he can even, you know, touch the higher pieces. And he's looking at them at the different colors and smelling it. And so, you know, I think we spent maybe an extra 10 minutes inside the store before I actually went to go get the part for the sink that I needed. But just taking that little bit of extra time kind of turned a trip to Home Depot and to Disneyland. All right. Now, maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit but it was a memorable experience. But as, you know, just as in many things in life, that, that sort of experience high that you get, it starts to fade away over time, right? And it's normal because over time, our interest in something, it just begins to fade. When we discover a product for the first time, maybe through a Facebook ad, for instance, we're highly interested. You know, there was something about that message that resonated with us. And we were intrigued. So we visited the website. And that is when our interest in the brand was the highest. But as with anything in life, that interest starts to diminish over time. Even just after an hour, that interest really drops. Now, most marketers, they understand this, but they've been really focused on email and SMS when it comes to personalization. But a huge opportunity that many brands are missing out on is personalization in real time when they are on your website and that and and when interest is the highest so there's four main types of uh, there's many different types of personalization strategies and in this webinar we're going to share a few different tactics that center around these four strategies number one improving your facebook's return on investment number two decreasing your card abandonment, three, growing your email list, and four, increasing your average order value and upselling. So let's take a look at the first one, improving the return on investment of our Facebook ad spend. Now, did you know that the average cost for a Facebook ad, the average cost per click in 2022 was 94 cents? That's pretty high. And uh, it's projected to go even higher. So how can we get the best ROI from our paid media spend? Well, Avi, they're an e-commerce brand. They focus on the health and wellness, uh, primarily with their protein power, powder. Uh, this is an example here of their landing page. So you now I'm trying to lose weight myself, so maybe I need to buy this, right? <laughs> but anyway, to get the best return on investment from their Facebook ad campaign, Avi could personalize their landing page headlines based on the ad copy of their Facebook ad. If you look at their ad on the left-hand side, the main headline here says, reverse signs of aging. It says, it says it in the copy on top and in the ad itself. And the copy goes on to say, my wrinkles are fading. And when a person clicks on the ad, does that headline resonate? Yes, it does. It says, say goodbye to wrinkles. It resonates perfectly. It's aligned with the ad and there's no confusion. The person has a smile on his face because he or she knows that they are in the right place. Now, Avi, they actually have more than one value proposition. In addition to getting rid of wrinkles, they also help prevent hair loss with their product as shown in this ad. And when a person clicks on this ad, they see the same exact landing page, except the headline is regrow healthy hair fast, which again, it's aligned with the ad they just clicked on. And another value proposition that Avi promotes 
is the best tasting collagen protein as shown in this ad. And voila, when somebody clicks on that, the landing page headline says the best tasting collagen protein. Now having the headline copy match the, uh, the copy that's in your ad through dynamic content can be done very easily as opposed to creating many different landing pages. Something that I used to do as a marketer back in the day using different tools where I could create you know, 10, 15 different landing pages for my ad campaign. Well, you don't need to do that anymore with dynamic content. So what can you expect from personalizing the landing page headlines based on the ad copy? About a conversion lift anywhere from 20 to 50%. All right. Now, what if uh, you're getting a lot of traffic from a particular website or maybe even an influencer that you could be working with? So another tactic to improve the ROI for that campaign is to make your visitors feel more special by making your offer feel more special. So, for example, if you're working with Forbes and visitors coming from Forbes, if you want to make them feel more special, you can do so by including Forbes in your welcome message, as you can see in this example here. And doing this can give you a lift in conversions around 20 to 40%. Okay. All right. So we learned a few different ways to improve the return on ad spend. Let's jump to personalization strategy number two, how to decrease cart abandonments. All right. Now, if you're not familiar with uh, Indestructible Shoes, they're an e-commerce brand that sells stylish shoes that are, guess what? Indestructible. The kind of shoes that you would want to wear when you're going uh, to Coachella or maybe doing Tough Mudder. Right? So let's see how some tactics they can use to decrease cart abandonment. Now, one tactic that we've all seen before is to show an exit pop-up and offer a discount. This is effective, but it's not ideal for those visitors who are still in the product discovery phase. So what you can do is if you have a visitor who hasn't put any items in their shopping cart but was just browsing, right, is to remind them of the products they recently viewed when they tried to leave your website instead of bombarding them with an irrelevant message. You can even show your best sellers for the current month. And this is a neat feature that you can set up on autopilot with smart tags. And as you can see here, the name of the current month will automatically change to March or January, whatever the month is. So there's other alternatives out there instead of pushing discounts if you want to reduce your card abandonment. Okay, let's look at another personalization strategy that can be used to increase email subscribers. Vegetology is an e-commerce brand that sells vegan and vegetarian supplements, and they want to build their email subscriber list. So let's take a look at some tactics that increase that can increase subscriber engagement. Now, we all know what a typical welcome pop-up looks like. It's usually something like this, sign up and get 10 to 15% off. And historically, you know, these have worked and they'll usually get you a 5 to 10% conversion rate. Now, if they want to get that 5% conversion rate even higher, significantly higher, one little thing that they can do, yet it's very highly effective, is to test different messages in their welcome pop-ups. They can test different messages in the pop-up pretty easily in the platform. So for example, they can test your order first, we covered 10%, versus join the Vegetology email list and get 10% off your first order. And when they get a winner, they can test another pop-up headline and continue to do so until they get a pop-up conversion rate anywhere in the 20 plus percentage range. Now, another thing they can do is add some seasonal flair to the messages. Notice how this pop-up says February special. So just by including the current month in your messaging can give you an added lift in the conversion rate. And the great thing is you have the ability to put these on autopilot so you don't have to manually adjust them every time. You can do this with smart tags to automatically display the current month, as you can see here. Now, this may not seem like a big deal, but after analyzing several A-B tests, we found that if you just display the current month in a coupon or pop-up message, this will give you a higher conversion rate than a standard message that doesn't really feature any seasonal fare, flair or anything you know, unique about it. And Mate shared an example with email how they made that coupon code uh, to align with that person or that customer or that visitor because it does matter. It's, it's personalization. 
Now, you can also elevate your customer journey by adding experience variants, like showing images that appeal to certain demographics. For example, uh, for women, you can have a pop-up of an image of a woman and vice versa for a man. So just like product variants out there, which are options of a product with different attributes, just like those product variants can drive sales, experience variants can elevate the shopping experience. All right, let's move to another personalization strategy. How can we increase average order value? Now, do you guys remember the story of Cinderella? She was in a bad place. She was a loving child, but she was treated very badly. And it wasn't until she heard about the ball and that she realized there's hope. There's a chance of finding love. Well, Blinjet was also in a bad place. They were receiving website visitors from a variety of sources, including affiliates, influencers, paid advertising, and social media. And people were landing all over their website, product pages, landing pages, the homepage. And this was troubling because they wanted a way to be able to show their offers consistently throughout their website. So one of the things that Blinjet could do to increase their average order value is show their offers consistently throughout their website. So if someone lands on the homepage, they could see the offer at the bottom of the page as they scroll and that horizontal bar, uh, bar right there in this example. If another visitor landed on another page, like the product page, they could see the same offer as well. And this can be done through embedded content, which is super convenient because you can have offers consistently shown throughout your website, which will generate an extra 15 to 20% in average order value. Now, another personalization tactic they could do is promote relevant products on product pages. Since they sell blenders, and lots of people use blenders to make smoothies, promoting their smoothies in a sidebar is a great way to upsell. Right? And you don't even have to show the sidebar immediately. This can appear when a person has been idle on a product page for a certain amount of time, or maybe they haven't clicked on anything after so many seconds you know, from being on the page. But by showing products that they can bundle, this can lift your average order value by 5 to 10% on average. So here's an example of another simple yet powerful tactic to increase average order value. If Avi... If they wanted to increase their AOV, they could do so by using embedded content to create order minimums for free shipping. So if you see right there, see the add $24 or more for free shipping horizontal bar at the bottom of the page. That's one example. And another example, on the left-hand side, there's an example from Blinjet. If they wanted to increase their AOV, instead of a free shipping threshold, they could give a percentage off discount if a person adds another blender. Uh, right there, it says, add one more, get 12% off. And this can actually be done on autopilot by combining embedded content and a smart tag. The result, an increase of 5 to 10% in average order value. Okay. All right, then. We've looked at four uh, personalization strategies and a few tactics that can help improve your return on ad spend, uh, decrease card abandonment, grow your email subscriber list, and increase your average order value. But those are not all of the personalization tactics that you can implement. We actually have a tactic library that has many more personalization strategies that you can do on your website. And uh, I'll drop the link at the end of this presentation. But the link is optimonk.com forward slash tactic slash library. Now, we also have a bonus for you. It's called the Trojan Horse Method. And many of our clients who are building both an email and SMS list use this tactic because it's easy to do and the conversion rate is pretty good. Very, very good. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail about how to set this up, but we do have pre-made Trojan Horse templates that are easy to set up. And basically, the first page uh, asks for visitors' email address in exchange for a discount. And then the next page asks if they like to upgrade the discount. And then after that, uh, the, next pay, the next page asks if uh, they can enter their SMS number, if they opted to do so. And then the next page reveals their discount code, depending on whether or not they opted into one or both. Now, once you implement this tactic, you now have a very powerful channel to communicate with your audience, since everyone generally, ha generally has their phone within arm's reach at all times. Okay, and now I think it's, uh, it's time for some Q&A. 
And uh, I will tell you about the personalization bootcamp in just a minute as well. Mate, if you want to take it over. Yes, thank you. I thank you for the wonderful presentation. Um, I've seen that most uh, questions in chat were already answered. So uh, if you have any questions to either me or Eric, now is the time to ask away in chat. And I'm dropping the personalization tactic library link here. Yeah, I already linked it in chat. Oh, perfect. Thanks, Mate. Thanks. Uh, you can also uh, join, uh, Eric will talk you, to you about um, the personalization bootcamp. Uh, but if you want to uh, get 15% off on all your pl get response plans for the first year, you can use this promo code. I'm also sending it in chat. And this will give you 15% give you discount from on all plans if you want to get a head start. Yeah. And uh, as Matei mentioned, the personalization bootcamp, this is new. This is brand new. We just launched this literally two weeks ago. We conduct this every two weeks. It's free. I host it. And uh, if you attend, you get a solid understanding of how website personalization works. You'll get a lot of ideas, like some of the ones that I shared with you on, on, on what and how you can implement personalization into your own website. And the best thing is that you actually get a checklist of website personalization opportunities and ideas. Uh, now, the great thing about this checklist is that when you go through each idea, it pri prioritizes the opportunity and recommends the solution for each idea. So in my opinion, with this checklist, you'll be able to increase conversions, grow your lists, reduce card abandonments, and increase your average order value very easily as it will tell you which opportunities to tackle first that will get you the best ROI. And there's the link right there, optimunk.com forward slash bootcamp. Uh, we have a question from uh, Kim. Uh, does uh, GetResponse have the option to send uh, text messages? Uh, yes, it does, but um, uh, only in our max plans. So we have uh, two tiers of uh, GetResponse. Uh, the uh, standard version is called uh, GetResponse SMB. And uh, the enterprise solutions are called GetResponse Max and Max 2. And uh, those include uh, uh, SMS text messages. I will also turn on the Q&A. Yeah. Uh, we have a question from uh, Anthony. Uh, right now, I don't ask for a first name. How can I add the first name to the existing list? Uh, in get response uh, you can uh, if you have their uh, first names you can um, import it uh, with the list import feature uh, that uh, you would need to import their email addresses and their first names and all of your uh, existing uh, contacts will be updated if you don't have the first name yet uh, then uh, you can add um, uh, an extra field to your um, um, lead capture form to also ask for uh, your subscriber's first name uh, when uh, uh, sub, uh, subscribing to your list or submitting the form. Um, any more questions? Let's wait for like one or more two minutes and if we don't have any, then we can just wrap it up. Uh, we have another question. Uh, could you explain why if you had uh, in get response new custom field or information as country of state, the database you can export from get response include other default fielders? Uh, um, yeah, so... Um, the uh, geolocation, uh, to my understanding, is uh, based on the IP address of your uh, subscribers. So this will give you like a general uh, idea of where they are located. Um, and this uh, is propagated uh, by Great Response automatically whenever someone subscribes to your list. But if to, you want to um, 
ask for this information from your uh, subscribers, then you can do so. And uh, those answers will be added to the um, added as custom fields, basically. Um, you can think of use cases when someone is traveling uh, and uh, subscribes to your list from a different country or city, or they are using a VPN. So this is something that's uh, useful uh, if you are concerned about where your uh, subscribers are actually located. I hope this answers your questions. Mate, I'm super impressed by uh, the capabilities uh, get response. I didn't know that through the email you could aut automatically have like product recommendations and then also how powerful the merge tags were in there. So yeah, thank I'm you. Impressed. Yeah. Thank you. And um, uh, also uh, uh, get response and Optimum has uh, an integration. So if you want to uh, max out the personalizations, you can uh, use um, both uh, get response and with the optimum integration to uh, send hyper personalized messages and also personalize your on site experience. Absolutely. Uh, we also have another question. Uh, I'm sending out regular emails to my subscribers. Should I always use their first name in subject line? Um, well, uh, this is a really interesting question from Dario. Um, Basically, um, for a while, we have seen, uh, we have um, the email marketing uh, benchmarks report, which is basically um, a research that we conduct every year, where we um, uh, check uh, how, what are the latest trends in email marketing. And for a while, we have seen that uh, personalizing uh, the subject line with the name of the recipient uh, provided better results, uh, higher open rates than uh, those who, what, than those subject lines that weren't personalized. But uh, in recent years, we have seen that the, this trend is a little bit, uh, turned on itself. And now um, adding the uh, name of the recipients in the subject line might actually hurt your uh, uh, open rate. And we think this uh, might be the case because uh, over the years, a lot of spammers use uh, this technique to add the names of uh, their recipients to the subject line when the actual content of the email was not relevant uh, to uh, the recipients at all. So maybe people are getting a little bit more uh, cautious with uh, these personalized subject lines. Um, so there is no like one size fits all solution here. I think uh, the best course of action here would be to uh, experiment and run A-B tests and see which uh, uh, works um uh, better for you in terms of open rates, whether you personalize your subject lines or not. That's interesting to know. Um, I've always, I've always heard that if you put the word you in the subject line, that that also um, improves your open rates too. Do you know if that's still the case, Mate, or no? Well, um, I'm not sure about this, uh, but I think uh, we, we can also send, um, uh, the email marketing benchmarks report to uh, everyone who registered for the webinar uh, as a link. And um, I think uh, we have an answer to that in that. But I don't <laughs> know. I don't know by heart. Um, yeah, I think we have answered all of your questions. So uh, thank you very much for everyone attending today's webinar. Thank you very much, Eric, for joining me. My pleasure. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for the great presentation. Um, yeah, uh, don't forget to um, uh, subscribe to um, the personalization bootcamp and to create a GetResponse account. And uh, you can also use the uh, GRWeb15 promo code for 15% off. So thank you very much again uh, and uh, have a great rest of your day.